So let's see this example. Uh, we have an inventory problem, right? And then now we have uncertainty. What does that mean? That basically means the random sales or random demand now is uncertain. We still have t periods. We start at period t and then move to period t minus 1, t minus 2, and so on. And the last day is period 1. So let's consider more about the random demand thing. Let's say every evening we place an order. Okay, and once we have that, we receive the ordered products in the next morning. So in each period, we get replenishment at the beginning of that day. That random daily demand will then realize throughout the day. If we can satisfy some demand, we earn some money, but unmet demand will be lost. So for example, if one day I have 10 units on hand, but there comes 12 customers. Two of them cannot be served and then they will just disappear. Okay, I have no way to call them back and uh, give them products late. I cannot do that, I just lose them. All the unsold products after T days will have no value. So that's assume there's no savage value for your product. And then um, if you have, then that doesn't really matter. You can still always have a way to add it but that's assume there is no savage value, okay? So the decision that we need to do is that in each evening, we need to decide how many to order. So this is a period. At the beginning, we get some ordered products, okay? And then products will be sold. So this is our random demand. And after the whole day, at the end, before we go to sleep, we make some orders. And then tomorrow morning, the products show up. So in each evening, we decide how many to order. We cannot order a negative quantity, okay? So there is no way for us to throw out our products. We can only order a non-negative number, okay? So you cannot throw your product away. We say that we want to adapt the order up to policy by finding a threshold. So what does that mean? We want to, so we want to do the, the things that every time when we want to make our inventory decision, we take a look at how many items I have on hand. If my item of on hand is lower than a certain threshold, I'm going to order up to that. Otherwise, I don't do anything. So let's say the threshold is 5. If at this moment I have 2, I'm going to order 3 units. But if I have 7, I'm going to order nothing, okay? So basically 5 in this case is an ideal inventory level. If I have fewer than that, I fill up to it. If I have more than that, I don't do anything, okay? We're going to see that how an optimal, how an order up to policy plays a role in this dynamic programming formulation. So let's introduce our notations. Uh, we still have P, I, don't know, I mean, I mean uh, we now have P, uh, which is the unit retailing price. We're going to sell products, and uh, for each product we sell, we may earn something. We have C as the unit purchasing cost, so that's the cost for us to pay to our suppliers to get one product. We still have Y, which is the on-hand inventory before ordering at the beginning of period T. We call it Y or we call it YT, doesn't really matter. Then we have QT, QT, what is QT? That's the on-hand inventory after ordering at the beginning of period T. Also, you somehow need to be careful about the two notations, Y and the QT, okay? So basically, Y is your state. It's something that you observe before you make your decision. And once you make your decision, you get to QT. So that's the amount you have after you make the decision. DT is your random demand. Capital N is the maximum possible daily demand, or some notation that we're going to use for later formulation. Okay? We assume that, well, demand is random, but it's at most capital N. We're going to define a function called u of q, t, and y. What's that? That will be our single period expected profit. 
That's something we will introduce to you later. It's going to depend on Y and depends on QT. Now you will see what's that. And then we have probability of X. What's that? Demand is random, right? So we need to know the random demand, which means we need to know its distribution. And let's assume this is a discrete problem. So your sales outcome or your demand volume is 1 or 2 or 7 or 10 is an integer. So let's say possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to n. Then for a distribution, we need to know what's the probability for us to sell no units. What's the probability for us to sell one unit? Uh, I mean the demand. Okay. Once we have the demand distribution, we are almost ready to do the formulation. So in this case, uh, if we do it more carefully, we need to remind ourselves at any time that what is the state for our problem. In this case, Y again is the state. We will look at the previous ending inventory to decide how much to order. And that QT is our decision. We want to decide after ordering how many I want to have on hand. Okay? PR is the demand distribution as we mentioned. Let's assume the demand is stationary, which means your probability does not depend on periods. Sometimes this assumption is not uh, correct. So for example, uh, when you are going to close your store, when you are already period 1, period 2, whatever, people know that your store is going to close, so they get to have a higher demand. That's possible. But here, let's assume capital D is just DT. Let's assume DT is dt prime for all t and t prime so that means basically they are all identical identically distributed okay 